All across the globe, from London to Manchester, the world panics to get their toilet paper. We fight for it, we barter, we steal, and we even throw poop at our enemies. What if I told you, that with some minor eating adjustments, you could literally erase your need for toilet paper? There is a way, that was researched by the Great Ones, nearly two decades ago. The following footage you are about to see, will change the world as you know it. If you eat food, you crap out your butt, right? Yeah. Alright, now keep with me here, it gets a little complicated. If you eat food and crap out your butt, then maybe if you stuck food in your butt, you would crap out your mouth. Ah. Uh, ah. Oh. Oh. Yeah, get it up there. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Oh. Whew. And that is how you eat a turkey. Yo, welcome to another episode of Two Shot. This is not the Two Shot Factor. This is me in my fucking bedroom. Because I'm gay. Where's that thing? Oh, man. Oh, wait, this is it here. An important overview of the virus. Let me just say, your package is... What the hell? Feeling confused as to why coronavirus is a bigger deal than seasonal flu? Here it is in a nutshell. I hope this helps. Feel free to share the blah, blah, blah. That's to do with RNA sequencing i.e. genetics. This is an animal virus. It's not a human virus. These are my own words from what I saw earlier. Human viruses that we're conditioned to, like the flu, our body already knows the genetics there, whereas animal viruses are different. They're foreign to us. We can't fight them off the same. There are a lot more unpredictabilities. There's long-term damage like the lungs, like I talked about earlier. There's higher death rates, way higher contagious rates. Seasonal flu is an all-human virus. The DNA RNA chains that make up the virus are recognized by the human immune system. That means, this means that your body has some immunity to it before it comes around each year. You get immunity two ways, through exposure to a virus or by getting a flu shot. I don't get flu shots. I don't get viruses. I just get even. What? All right. Novel viruses come from animals. The WHO tracks novel viruses in animals, sometimes for years watching for mutations. Usually these viruses only trans transfer from animal to animal. Pigs in the case of H1H1, H1N1. Birds in the case of the Spanish flu. But once one of these animal virus mutates and starts to transfer from animals to humans, then it's a problem. Why? Because we have no natural or acquired immunity. The RNA sequencing of the genes inside the virus isn't human, and the human immune system doesn't recognize it, so we can't fight it off. Now, sometimes the mutation only allows transfer from animal to human. For years, its only transmission is from an infected animal to a human before it finally mutates so that it can now transfer human to human. Once that, ha once that happens, we have a new condition contagion phase. And depending on the fashion of this new mutation, that's what decides how contagious or how deadly it's going to be. H1H1. H1N1 was deadly, but it did not mutate in a way that was as deadly as the Spanish flu. Its RNA was slower to mutate and it attacked its host differently too. Fast forward. Now here comes the coronavirus. It existed in animals only for nobody knows how long, but one day at an animal market in Wuhan, China in December 2019, well, that's wrong right there, apparently, because they've recently admitted that it was November that they knew about it. Whatever, though. December, maybe that's when it officially... It mutated and made the jump from animal to people. At first, only animals could give it to a person, but here's the scary part. In just two weeks, it mutated again and gained the ability to jump from human to human. Scientists call this quick ability slippery. This coronavirus, not being in any form a human virus, whereas we would all have some natural or acquired immunity took off like a rocket, and this was because humans have no known immunity. Doctors have no known medicines for it. What the hell are they doing up there? They like slide things around all the time. Like what are they doing? What happened to their video games? They have a giant house of floors, but they're always here sliding chairs around and making dumb noises. God, I hate the upstairs people. They're like morons. And then you always hear the mom, Bobby Jima, Bobby Jima. A little while ago was Bobby. Bobby Chima? And he's, he, then he's just like, Oh, Chima! I thought you were talking to one of the other Bobbies. Fucking morons, man. <laughs> the coronavirus not being in any... Didn't we already read that? 
And it just so happens that this particular mutated animal virus changes itself in such a way that it causes great damage to human lungs. That's what I said before on one of my earlier episodes. That's why coronavirus is different from seasonal flu or H1N1 or any other type of influenza. This one is slippery AF. And it's a lung eater. And it's already mutated again, so that we now have two strains to deal with. Strain S and strain L. I never even heard that on the news. Which makes it twice as hard to develop a vaccine. We really have no tools in our shed with this. History has shown that fast and immediate closings of public places has helped in the past pandemics. Philadelphia and Baltimore were reluctant to close events in 1918, and they were the hardest hit in the U.S. during the Spanish flu. Fact of it, Henry VIII stayed in his room and allowed no one near him till the Black Plague passed. Honestly, I understand him so much better now. Don't we all? Just like us, he had no tools in his shed, except social isolation. What about Bill Clinton? Apparently, when he's talking to Marge Simpson, he's always hanging out back near his shed. He's like, I've done it with pigs. Uh, if you want to see me sometimes, I'm always hanging out in the back near the shed. <laughs> I'm a lousy president, Marge. And let me end by saying right now it's hitting older folks harder. We know this. But this genome is so slippery. If it mutates again, and it will, who is to say what, will it, what it will do next? Be smart, folks. Acting like you're unafraid is so not sexy right now. Oh, oh we've got the first person gets experimental coronavirus vaccine. With careful jabs in the arms of four healthy volunteers, scientists at the Kaiser Permanente Washington Research Institute in Seattle began an anxiously awaited first stage study of a potential COVID-19 vaccine developed in record time after the new virus exploded out of China and fanned out across the globe. See, they're saying it exploded out of China, yet they're criticizing Trump for calling it the China virus. It is a China virus. We're team coronavirus now, Kaiser Permanente whatever, permanente study leader Dr. Lisa Jackson said on the eve, they really made that sound complicated, on the eve of the experiment, everyone wants to do what they can in this emergency. We're team coronavirus now. Uh, the Associated Press observed as the study's first participant, an operations manager at a small tech company received the injection in the exam room, in an exam room. We all feel so helpless. This is an amazing opportunity for me to do something, Jennifer Haller, 43 of Seattle, said before getting vaccinated. Her two teenagers think it's cool, and she's taking part in the study. After the injection, she left the exam room with a big smile. I'm feeling great. It's like, yeah, we also put a little morphine in there. It's like, <laughs> nice. The vaccine candidate, codenamed mRNA-1273, was developed by the NIH and Massachusetts-based biotechnology company Moderna Inc., there's no chance participant could get infected because the shots do not contain the coronavirus itself. It's not the only potential vaccine in the pipeline. Dozens of research, research groups around the world are racing to create a vaccine against COVID-19. Another candidate, made by Enovio Pharmaceuticals, is expected to begin its own study next month in the US, China, and South Korea. The Seattle experiment got underway days after the World Health Organization declared the new virus outbreak a pandemic because of its rapid global spread, which has infected more than 169,000 people and killed more than 6,500. COVID-19 has upended the world's social and economic fabric since China first identified the virus in January. We got December, January, and I've heard November. We gotta get our story straight, people. It's looking bad if you were in the courts. Oh, this one here. Why outbreaks like coronavirus spread exponentially and how to flatten the curve. This so-called exponential curve is experts worried. If the number of cases were to continue to double every three days, there would be about 100 million cases in the United States by May. That is math, not prophecy. The spread can be slowed, public health professionals say, if people practice social distancing. I'm always social distancing. I'm hiding in my bedroom like a true paladin. By avoiding public spaces and generally limiting their movement, still without any measures to slow it down, COVID-19 will continue to spread exponentially for months. To understand why, it is instructive to simulate the spread of a fake disease through a population. Okay. We will call our fake disease simulitis. It spreads even more easily than COVID-19. Whenever a healthy person comes into contact with a sick person, the healthy person becomes sick too. Just for the process of learning. In a population of just five, it did not take long for everyone to catch simulitis. In real life, of course, people eventually blah 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 blah. Let's see what happens when simulitis spreads in a town at 200 people. We will start everyone in town at a random position, moving at a random angle, and we will make one person sick. So it's brown rep is sick, uh, healthy is green, and purple is recovered. We got 200 unrecovered for some reason. Notice how the slope, oh, because I got to run a new simulation. Notice how the slope of the red curve, which represents the number of sick people, it's purple. These guys are colorblind. How can you trust them? Rises rapidly as the disease spreads and then tapers off as people recover. Tapers, nice big grade 10 word. Good word, good coloring. It's bone. Good coloring. That's purple. No, it's red. Taper. 
animal virus. Okay, run a new simulation. Okay, so you got a bunch of idiots moving around. I wish we could get like Sim City type guys. Hold on. 16. I'm never gonna be able to transfer this into my fucking. Oh my god. Like a huge file. As you can see, everyone's becoming fucked up. Oh man. There, there are people recovering now. Our simulation town is small, about the size of Whittier, Alaska. So stimulus. So simulitis was able to spread quickly across the entire population. In a country like the United States with its 330 million people, the curve could steepen for a long time before it started to slow. When it comes to the real COVID-19, the real COVID-19, we would prefer to slow the spread of the virus before it infects a large portion of the U.S. Slow stimuli- simulitis. Let's- let's try to create- we should just call it- <clears throat> Okay, here we go. Forced quarantine such as the one the Chinese government did. Imposed on Hubei province. Okay, look at this. So, things are slowed down and you've got this big border. Whoops. As health experts would expect, it proved impossible to completely see off the sick population from the healthy. So they started mixing. Okay, that's a problem. You've got you've got a you've got a, a loose bandit. You got a bandit out there. Now there are two, three. It's over. Holy, eh? That's interesting. Liana Wen, the former health commissioner. I wish there were video games like pew pew pew, like asteroids and shit. You know, little Corona space games. The former health commissioner for the city of Baltimore explained the impracticalities of forced quarantines to the Washington Post in January. Many people work in the city and live in neighboring counties, and vice versa, Wen said. <sighs> would people be separated from their families? How would every road be blocked? How would supplies reach residents? A lot of planning. As Lawrence O'Gostin, a professor of global health, look, blah, 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 the truth is those kinds of lockdowns are very rare and never effective. Yeah, because people get bored. They're like, I need to go outside. I need to, like, you know, go for a walk and play tennis. Fucking tennis players. But negative attitudes. Fortunately, there are other ways to slow an outbreak. Above all, health officials have encouraged people to avoid public gatherings, to stay home more often, and to keep their distance from others. If people are less mobile and interact with others... If people are less mobile and interact with each other less, the virus has fewer opportunities to spread. Some people will still go out. Maybe they cannot stay home because of their work or other obligations, or maybe they simply refuse to heed public health warnings. These people are not only more likely to get sick themselves, they are more likely to spread simulitis too. Let's see what happens when a quarter of our population continues to move around. Will the other three quarters adopt a strategy of what health experts call social distancing? Oh, well, look at that. Some people aren't moving around. They're just like, I'm not going to move. I don't want to get sick. You can't see me if I don't move. Well, oh, oh, see, with the social distancing and the, and the mayhem. Boyven. Look here with the colors, children. Oh, the healthy are going down. Oh, the sickness as it spreads. If only you could understand the properties, children. Look. More social distancing keeps even more people healthy, and people can be nudged away from public places by removing their allure. We control the desire to be in public places. Yeah, whatever. Doctor Thomas, Drew Harris, whatever. Okay, so this is like people, and they're all pretty much standing still, except a couple jerks. So basically, everyone's obeying the rules and hiding, but there's a few assholes that just keep. Fucking bouncing around. <laughs> you can't stop us. We're gonna go outside. No lockdown for me. And look what happens. Well, you know, you mess up a few people, but you don't get that many of them. See, there's a change over time. Eventually, a lot of these people are not even gonna get affected because there's only so much time. Okay, that's great. Subscribe to my channel. Stay inside. Um, d distance yourself from friends. Don't have friends. Just become a loner and definitely go to the liquor store because they probably got all the sales. Don't hoard though. If I catch you hoarding, I will. I know the liquor store is going to stay open. Let's find out. <sighs> hey, uh, how, are you guys open regular hours now? Yep. And you guys are one of the places that is planning on not closing down during this time? No, we're not closing down. Excellent, excellent. Okay, I'll probably. All right, that's cool. Okay, I'll probably see you on the weekend. Okay. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. I love that the liquor store. They're like, no, we're not closing down at all. It's like nothing can stop us. They're an unstoppable, an unbeatable market force. They're survivors, and their their profits are gonna just accelerate. Their sales are gonna go through the roof. Alcoholics are gonna start becoming, you know, like like closet alcoholics, like loner alcoholics. I love it. Because it's just like I was once when I was young. Those were the good old days. <laughs> just like Nicolas Cage. Me and him were like brothers in a way. Can we run a clip on this? Is this possible? We're team coronavirus now. Yeah.